deux. Ça va go down there. Yeah. Not here. What? Oh. What? Okay, hold on a second. How do I turn that down? It's a nice picture. Mm -hmm. Is my mic on? Yes. Turn it off. Okay, there might be Skype turning on. I hope nobody's talking to me with crazy stuff. Hello, hi and welcome to our session about the future of Wikipedia and Wikipedia in 10 years. I'm happy that all of you are here and um, you're still happy and energetic and you know I will you will contribute a lot. So um, to tell you about the session, you know we Germans like to hike and walk a lot. And in Berlin we have these nice city walks where some Wikipedians walk through some unknown part of the city and try actually basically try to outdo each other by knowing obscure facts about the city. So one day, me and my friend Barbara had this walk around the city, and I um, told you, you know, I've been in Wikipedia for 10 years, and I tried to sound very old and very wise, that you know that one server, nobody knew Jimbo. You know, I printed out all the rules, every written rule on page, and it was eight pages. Now look at us. We have about 40 um, pages just on notability criteria. We are flying to Hong Kong, flying all over the world. Everybody knows Wikipedia. So much has changed in the last 10 years. And Barbara, smart, being as she has said, yeah, you know, Doug, well, we won't stop here. It will change again. The future will be others, will be different. I thought, oh yeah, that's scary actually. Don't know what will happen. So maybe I should ask some people, some bright people. I thought, hmm, where will I meet some bright people? Wikimania, Hong Kong. So I asked some very bright, inspiring people to come with me to step into a time machine and go on the year 2022 and ask what Wikimania will be like. Then I thought, wait, but time machine is difficult. Somebody has operated. It's almost impossible. So who do I know who can do the impossible? I thought, Wikimania Haifa, I know who can do it. I know somebody who can do the impossible, and so ask Dara if you would operate the time machine for us. Please, Dara, come on stage. It just, that, just that you have noticed that he first went to bright people, and only then he decided to go to me. So <laughs> I'm not one of the bright people. I'm just operating the time machine. This is Hong Kong. Um, they can do amazing stuff here. They do not have time machine yet. The only one with time machines are Wikimedia Deutschland. So I want to invite Barbara, who bought Wikimedia Deutschland's time machine, to operate it. And please, while we are operating the time machine, please hand, hold fast to your seat and do not go out, because if you go out, you will not find Wikimedia there. We are 10 years into the future. Barbara, please activate the time machine and tell us what the world is like in 10 years. Hello, everybody. Have you fastened your seat belts? Please do so. This is very dangerous. Uh, the ones that are a bit scared, please uh, grab a hold of your neighbor, okay? I want you all now to be... Yeah, right, that's good. Um, I want you all now to concentrate. Please focus on this time machine. Is everybody focused? Okay. Close your eyes. Count slowly to from 10 to 0, and then we'll be in 2022. we we'll still be in Hong Kong, but 10 years later. So we start now. Close your eyes and we start. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 
four, three, two, one, oh. All right, open your eyes, and here we are. In my beautiful life in 2022, thanks to PLW. We all know PLW. For the ones that don't know, please leave the small letters further down. Um, this is a brief review of the major trends we have passed through in the last 10 years. I would like just, you know, I'm a historian, and I would like you to go back a bit in time and see what are the major trends we have passed in the last 10 years. Okay. Technical things haven't become easier yet. Well, first thing <laughs> is personalization. I reckon many of you were already bright and shiny in 10 years ago. And at least in Europe, we had a big campaign from Coca-Cola. And Coca-Cola felt so safe in its brand that they invited their consumers to label the Coke bottles with their names. This was some sort of procure um, or first climax in personalization. Um, Today, personalization has become a natural part of our life. We take it all for granted. As I care really for arts and history, oops, why doesn't it work? No, 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 I'm just having to go through here. Yeah. I like to stroll around the cities. And I have, a, of course, a watch phone. I probably reckon you all have watch phones nowadays. And you know, it has these uh, nice options. You can either choose for arts or for history. I choose for arts, so I stroll through uh, Hong Kong. And it gave me all these uh, nice uh, sequences out of the Wong Kar Wai's movie, um, Chongqing Express. And, um, and sometimes I, I switch over to history and I would just bump in the building and as I find it hard to read on, on, uh, on the street, it's a bit dangerous with all these cars flying across, um, I actually have it read to me. And um, I don't know about you, I, I prefer having it uh, read to me. And, um, and there also um, are like these uh, other personalization things um, as... Um, Oh, this is really hard. Um, yeah, of course, the evening news show. You remember like 10 years ago, we all had to watch the same news shows in the evening. Uh, and there was always these boring people there. Uh, our days, you can choose among a thousand options, uh, your favorite new speaker. And um, I'm a fan of young George Clooney, like how he looked like 10 years ago. So um, I had him as a, my favorite news speaker. And um, what I really love is that in the end of the news, uh, of course he only tells me the news I want to hear, like no fin financial news any longer, and no cricket results, and no football games. I'm not really interested in that. I mean, he knows what he, I want. So in the end, he would tell me, good night, Barbara, and happy dreams. I really love that. Oh yes, or I have a, a trolley when I go to the supermarket. We all know how difficult it was in, in old times. You would have to pass through the whole supermarket in order to find the products you need. Today, your, super, your supermarket trolley, he knows what you need. So he will take me um, directly to the, vegetable, um, to the vegetables. Um, sometimes he takes a little detour to the chocolate bar, but um, honestly, I, I assume that this would, uh, would I would have liked to do, but you know, my supermarket trolley, he simply knows me better and uh, he treats me like a princess. You imagine that I like that too. Yeah, so uh, those few examples show you that everything has, has become very much better. Everything has been decide, uh, designed in order to, um, for op optimizing my, um, my user things, uh, this is called UDO, User Designed Optimization. And the algorithm that runs it all um, has made my world a better place, I assume yours too. Um, other motives um, that might also be 
considered as important, like curiosity or sympathy or contemplation, um, have been proven of no relevance to that algorithm. It's clear. And And uh, sure, I, I'm a rational being and, and not an instinct-driven um, monkey. So uh, um, this is how my desires have uh, become to create my own little beautiful world. I'm so grateful for it. Well, um, we all see that... Oops. We all see that the, the other big trend in PLV is linking up. And um, we, we are all in one world now. Everybody and everything is intertwined in our days as in an organic nervous system. You and me, we are on air constantly. Parallel to our biological ego, there is a digital ego and it's under construction all the time in the net and it has its life of its own. The digital ego is sending and taking in non-stop. This is why your ex-wife knows on what bar you are at the moment, and she's able to avoid meeting you. I mean, you do appreciate it, don't you? And the Internet of Things, you know, this was a thing they talked about a lot the uh, past 10 years, um, is right now developed like a caring uterus for me. Uh, my bicycle, I'm, a, I'm still a heavy bicycle driver, has its own IP and through its own IP he wonders on Facebook when I will actually buy new tires. Immediately when, when he figures out that I should actually buy new tires, I get those user fitted offers both from my bicycle shop close by, or for my insurance company, what, company, what would happen if I don't change the tires and my rate would go up. And um, thanks to Facebook's social graph, I'm able to connect all those tired, tired bikers in my uh, surroundings and organize a quick flash mob on the local bike shop in order to bargain a better price. Still another example. Um, did you realize that the webcam on your movie screen um, notes when you seem to wonder it about something going on on the screen? Watching Jaws, for instance, the menus will ask you, do you want to stop the movie and learn more about the habits of white sharks? The link appears to the corresponding Wikipedia article. It's so convenient, don't you think? Um, because actually, scientists have proved that the learning capacity increases dramatically when, you, when it is stimulated by natural curiosity, like watching a movie. I ask you, what is all that hype about free knowledge when it does not come to you when you feel for it? As we and all the things around us are linked, you can feel safe. You will get what you need, but only when you need it. Being part of the system is so comforting. The algorithm running the system is thus not questioned. It is optimizing itself and does hence not need any democratic legitimation. Just as electricity comes out of the socket, don't worry, be happy. Coming to the next trend, visualization. See, this is um, Napoleon. Um, I reckon there are some French people here, and they are able to read the French uh, little quote. Oh, over there. Nice. Could you have that in the original version, please? All right. For all those that couldn't hear or are not able to understand the French, this is um, mainly translated in uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, well, I would like to add, what is not to be captured in a glance is not of no interest to me. Texts exceeding more than two tweets are impertinent. How do you feel about it? Or quoting Wittgenstein, because after all I'm a studied person, uh, a bit freely quoting him. What is not to be said in pictures must be passed over in silence. 
Wikipedia in 2022 shows 70% visual information and still, unfortunately, 30% text. Photos, oops, no, going back here, so. Photos, infographics, 3D visuals of the lemma and how to films made by an increasing number of volunteers stand for the bulk. But since the, that legislation change in um, 2018, comps are meaning uh, composed one minute films are gaining terrain. These one minute films are composed by bots using film snippets. The International Standard Visual Content Tagging, VCT, has made it easy to deal with visual content. 10 years ago, damaged text snippets were easily identified by volunteers unaware of their role, where computers failed in the optical character recognition, a service provided by Capture. To transfer that lesson thought taught by Capture to film was, as you all can remember, a genius move of Wikimedia chapter Hong Kong. Thanks to that. I think that's really an applause. I mean, that's 10, like three years ago, but actually it was a genius move. Um, ever since, in all banking operations, users all over the world do tag film fragments in order to tell computers and humans apart. So soon all film snippets will be tagged. That's really great. Well, coming to an end, we see our life has changed very much. We are all, our life is now online. I therefore would really like you to show some compassion for those people that suffer that severe human rights abuse called OLT, offline time. And please sign the Global South Jimbo petition now in order to prevent us or to, to support those people that are not online yet. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Oh, is, it, is this on? Oh, it's not on? Oh, it is on. Thank you, Barbara, for showing us what the world is outside in the year 2023. 20, yeah? 22? Okay. Uh, while Barbara likes her Wikipedia heard on the microphone, I think it's better just to raise your iPhone and look at the building and get your edited article just for your interest. It lets you know who important lives on the building and what happened there and none of the, only the people that you are interested in. Uh, Derek has uh, compiled a list of five bright people to tell us actually how it works, who are the people behind Wikipedia 10 years from, uh, from now making this wonder. And I want to invite Marco, Christoph, yes. to the stage, and Derek, and Barbara, and Melissa, and they are going to tell us who are the people who are making Wikipedia work. Yes? Yes. So, okay, we're going to start, we'll do this in order. Each one is going to tell us about a different aspect of Wikipedia or a different Wikipedia, different language. We're going to start with Marco. Marco, we're going to start with you. All right. Yeah, and you're going to tell us about what happened in the past 10 years in the English Wikipedia. All right. All right, well, a lot has changed with uh, Wikipedia in the last 10 years or so. Uh, so, you know, I, I, if you remember back to 2013, Wikipedia was in many ways being slowed down by a bunch of policies, you know, it sort of accreted policies in ways that have already been sort of mentioned. Uh, more rules, more things to follow. It became increasingly difficult to do lots of things in Wikipedia. In fact, by 2018, 
um, one of the things that was very difficult was creating new articles. There was actually a very long, drawn-out process that started with a one- or two-step process. Eventually, it became a, a seven-step process to create new articles. Uh, over between 2018 and 2018 months or so, they had actually, Wikipedia had only been able to create 24 new articles um, during a, this short period of time because of this very complicated seven-step process. Um, so, uh, what happened was is a, a number of um, sort of Wikipedians or ex-Wikipedians frustrated by this created a new project. It was actually called Newpedia, um, uh, uh, you know, N-E-W, Newpedia, uh, and the goal of Newpedia was to create, uh, you know, a, a, a place kind of um, sort of more freeform. It didn't have a lot of rules and policies. Anyone could create anything. Notability guidelines weren't important. You could just create. It was. A, it was a like a like a wiki for everything, right? Like like Wikipedia, except not just for the kinds of things that are on Wikipedia. It was for it was for all kinds of stuff. Quality didn't matter. People could write anything, and eventually it might be improved. The idea behind Newpedia was that. Maybe when things got really good, we could use it as sort of a feeding ground for Wikipedia. We could take those articles and maybe get them approved and put them back into, you know, the really high quality Wikipedia project. But, um, but what happened was is that eventually so many people were using Newpedia that basically, like, Wikipedia just sort of dried up. People started paying less attention to it and uh, started working on it less and uh, eventually, you know, basically Newpedia was the only project that people were using. Um, and people eventually created a new organization to support it, the Newpedia Foundation. And, uh, uh, and, um, and you know, Wikipedia is sort of still around in some sense, and, and in the sense that a lot of its content had been uh, sort of imported into Newpedia, is one, you know, someone wrote some, some bots to help with that process. Um, it's, you know, a lot of that material is still there. Um, Newpedia was enormously successful, and Wikipedia in that process sort of suffered. And it's interesting, many, many of Wikipedia editors be, were very upset about this, and um, it, eventually the relationship became sort of antagonistic. Now, now um, if this sounds a little familiar, some people have pointed out that something very similar had actually happened with Wikipedia initially, right? Wikipedia was, um, a, it was a weird coincidence. No one had thought about it at the time, but there was actually you know, this other project called Newpedia, uh, except spelled with an N-U, which, which Wikipedia had been created in, uh, you know, as a side project for in a very similar way. Um, and you know, there's this, this, I'm a, you know, my background is as a sort of organizational sociologist, and sociologists like to talk about this process of institutionalization. It's this process through which organizations become sort of imbued with value. Every time people go out to create, when, we, when, when you create an organization, whether it was Wikipedia or the or Newpedia or maybe the original Newpedia, um, you know, the goal was never to sort of sustain the particular project. The goal of Wikipedia was never to, you know, make Wikipedia succeed. The goal was to, per, to per create a great source of encyclopedic knowledge which could be accessible to people around the world and which would be sort of be uh, modifiable by users. That the, the, the people, people that, that it was a system which would allow people to transcend their roles as just consumers of culture. And it's interesting because the, the success of Wiki, many people, I think, saw, you know, you know, sort of lost track of this. They thought that promoting Wikipedia or promoting the, Wiki, the Wikimedia Foundation was at, it sort of became the goal through this process, right? Because we became attached to the organization and its process. Whereas, um, you know, I think, that, I think that what's become clear to many people, but maybe not everyone, is that, that the goals of Wikipedia can succeed um, even if the organization doesn't. And in fact, in the long term, that's exactly what's happened. What, what, what we've learned from Barbara that everybody is using Wikipedia, but Marco just told us that the people behind it has actually left the project. So that, that's what happened to English Wikipedia. We will later hear from other people who will tell us who is actually writing Wikipedia now. That's not the original user. But first, let's look, about, let's look at a different Wikipedia, not the English one, the Spanish Wikipedia. Uh, Melissa, can you tell us what happened the past 10 years in the Spanish Wikipedia? Well, thank you, and hello to everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, in 2013, in Spanish Wikipedia, we have a really big problem with our community because everybody has so different ideas and we have many users fighting for things not related to editing. 
but to other more deeper problems. So how is it possible to fix this in, for, for the next two and 10 years? Well, one solution will be separating ourselves even more. Maybe one Wikipedia per country, or maybe one Wikipedia per gender, because we also have the gender gap, <laughs> and women write different from men, and men from women, some people think. So I was thinking about specifically the problems. Maybe you're not, you don't know them very well. Well, you can ask any volunteer from Spanish Wikipedia. He will tell you that there are so many users who have been blocked, who usually come back with new accounts to just produce problems in Spanish Wikipedia. So I was thinking in the future, maybe we should ban expel and let just everyone comes in and do wherever they want a real, and make it a really free encyclopedia, but maybe because everybody can write whatever they want and let's leave etiquette all aside. However, being more realistic, uh, I was thinking on how we can do to fix this problem. I'm also, every single of you who edit in different Wikipedias, maybe you can think of your own examples in your Wikipedias. So, the question is, what do we do to fix this? And I was thinking, there is a re-education of the community that we need. Maybe we could all bring people to events like this and make it more accessible to the general public. For example, people who are in Argentina right now in my country, so many users couldn't make it here because it's so far away and so expensive. Why don't we do this more accessible to them? And also, um, bringing on the, the gender gap, I also was thinking on making maybe a special place like inside Wikipedia to well, feel, make feel new women welcome. Because on my example, when I arrived at Wikipedia, I didn't feel very welcome at all. And I was only 15 years old, and I was in a young girl. And nobody took me serious. So I think that we can learn about our past, or our past experiences and make it good for the future to construct a better encyclopedia. And I also would like to say that I, I would love if we all come back to basics, uh, just editing and do it because we like it. I know we've been thinking about all the policies and all the things that are aside. Just focus on writing about what we want and what we like and enjoy yourself. So thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. Uh, what you've told us is that basically the policies, like, like uh, Marco said, the policies made it also almost impossible for people to edit, general users, and, and you want to go back to the roots for people just editing for their fun. Yes. So, Barbara, can you tell us who is really editing Wikipedia now? What are, who is actually do, putting in all the contents at uh, this stage of Wikipedia? It's me. Yes. All right, um, I'm having here a hat on as being a, a representative for the GLAMs. And I've been asking many GLAM institutions what, what, what they really would see in the future. And to them, Wikipedia is a, a pretty nice and attractive option because uh, they feel that um, their visitors will, um, will change from being just a mere visitor with maybe his hands on the back in order not to touch anything and you know, I mean you have to be very careful walking around a museum, but becoming a, an active user and um, interacting with the artifacts uh, in, in the museum. And um, so uh, for them, um, finding a way to contribute to Wikipedia and having uh, the user in, in the museum or in the art collection or um, in, in the archive being at the same time both receiving and, and sending out would be, would be very good. But actually, um, we, we do have those uh, regulations and uh, they are helpful in order to maintain a certain quality um, level. Um, but we, we also have this um, big problem on, um, um, well, the conflict of interests. Uh, of course, if, if I as a GLAM institution read in the Wikipedia, uh, let's say on a, on a topic that I feel very secure about, and I read that this is uh, put in a way that 
is, I feel, unacceptable. Uh, I find it very hard to correct those, uh, those points because uh, people would say, oh yeah, you, you want just to push your, your institution forward. So uh, I fear if, if we remain reluctant against um, uh, people that, that want to enter uh, or, or put content into the Wikipedia just because they have also uh, a point of view or they have like their personal or the institutional interests, we might um, risk that in, in the long run they will pass by us because uh, Wikipedia might not be as, a, as attractive any longer and new things will, will approach. So I really um, hope that we will find a solution to make it easier to contribute in the Wikipedia. Thank you. Um, Christoph, uh, can you tell us about other institutes that might learn how to edit Wikipedia and might actually do it better than the regular editors? So, um, we are sort of in the beginning of economic crisis and uh, in 2014, 2015, it was bad, really bad. Everybody stops giving money. I mean, you don't have money for food, for oil, for anything, so you won't give for Wikipedia, obviously. Um, so by 2016, we have this kind of an issue. We don't have any money anymore. And then you have this big, good corporation that wants to give us money. Yay, one condition. It's a buyout. You have to become a company and to start behave like a company and make profits. So by 2016, so we don't have any money, we have this offer and we have the choice either to shut down Wikipedia or to become a huge company. And well, the choice is there. We believe in free knowledge. So hey, we're gonna become a company, we have values. And then by 2018, you have shareholders that call you and say, hey, you have to turn a profit. So perhaps you could start to sell ads on Wikipedia. I mean, come on, it's not a big deal. Well, we have no money, we need money. And donation is not working anymore. Sorry for the foundation, which doesn't exist anymore, by the way. Um, so we start selling ads, but it's not enough. I mean, we are in economic crisis. Nobody is buy ads anymore. You have to find other way to make money, better way to make money. So you start to make targeted ads. So you know what the people are reading, you know the article they're lacking, and they go on editing. So if someone is editing, I don't know, computer articles, smartphone articles, perhaps we could sell more ads about smartphones to them. So we start gathering data about our users, because hey, it's easy and it's not dangerous. I mean, come on. What's bad is that to have some information about our users? And, but it's not enough. I mean, we have shareholders now. They want more money. So by 2019, we have gathered the data. Why should we keep it for us? Other people would be interested in that. So let's sell that data to somebody else. And then it's not enough. And we have so many users that are de dedicated, that are addicted. You are addicted to Wikipedia. You love editing Wikipedia. <laughs> now you're going to pay to edit Wikipedia. <laughs> I mean, come on. You're spending seven hours a day on our servers for free? <laughs> you have to contribute a little. You're not donating, so we make you donate. And at some point, you know, when you start making people pay to edit, you have a little less editors, and then other companies start to pay people to edit better and if they have time, they do great contribution, but they are non-neutral. Oh, crap. But the thing is, if we don't let them being not neutral, they will stop editing, so we will earn less money. So let's do two ways of the article, two versions of the article, a neutral one and non-neutral one. <laughs> so if a reader really wants to have the neutral encyclopedic article and he believes in free knowledge, loves knowledge, well, he's gonna pay. I mean, come on. You love knowledge, you pay for knowledge. It's rational. Um, and, you know, these ads are still there. They are bothering everyone and they're not making any money for us. So we could also ask people to pay not to have the ads, you know, go back to what they had at the beginning. And, um, I mean, so we now have ads or not if you're paying. I mean, if you're paying, you don't have ads, so you can subscribe. Um, it's not that expensive. I mean, 10 euro a month, come on. Um, 
but we have all this data about our users. I mean, we know what they read, we know on what hat they click, and we know their relationship between them, and we could really, we could even help them. I mean, they are geeks. They are the people that don't meet people, so we could help them meet people. So they could become a dating site. Come on. I mean, if you're reading article about, I don't know. This is really good. <laughs> So if you're reading an article about football, hey, let's meet somebody who likes football. And if you're reading, um, I don't know, if you're liking pictures about art, about portraits, I mean, I'm not focusing on any portraits right now, um, but if you like that, you will meet other people that like that. Um, so now we have this huge website, which is awesome. I mean, people are paying to read it, are paying to edit it, are paying to meet people, and. If they don't want ads, they can pay. So by 2022, I mean, Wikipedia is so awesome and full of and many ways to make money that we don't have any problem with money. Well, our shareholder doesn't because, you know, profit, so you have to cut down salaries and so on, but it's okay. So here we are, 2020, and Wikipedia has become a huge profitable company, and we all love that. Thank you. Oh, it's good. Money is good. I mean, <laughs> you don't want any money. I mean, you could become shareholders. You can buy shares in Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> come on. Whomever wrote an article gets one share of that company. Think of the dividends. The, can you tell us what the general public thinks of Wikipedia at this stage? <clears throat> yeah, I can. And, um, I have good news for you. Wikipedia still exists in 2022. And actually, it hasn't changed so much. The bad news is nobody knows. <laughs> because by then, you know, Wikidata will have really taken up. The API will have been really good. We've got Google Glass, we've got smartwatches. So nobody will read Wikipedia anymore. You just get snippets from Wikipedia through other apps. You won't go to this ugly website where big chunks of texts are, where nobody wants to go. You won't see it. You will just listen to music. You will listen to see movies from, made from Wikipedia. And Wikipedia itself, you know, it's this big text. It's just for graduate students who maybe go there on the advanced level and can read the encyclopedia. And it will be there, it will be public, but it's just for a select few who can go there. You know, the Wikipedians itself, some people actually will write articles, but these have to be experts, they have to know all the rules, they have to follow up Michael's seven-step process. They still exist, they make valuable content, but most people will be facilitators who will go to GLAMS, who will offer content, who get free pictures from somewhere, who will educate other ones, and of course, there will always be the foundation who has given up on the community, thought couldn't, can't change it anymore, they're just too stubborn and just too strange, and they don't like anything we do, so we just knew let them be and do a new thing. We just make apps where people can edit Wikipedia on the phone and take pictures and do easy, nice stuff where you can't break anything, where you don't have to know much, what you can do in two minutes at the next moment. Everybody can do it. The masses can edit Wikipedia. And these strange people sitting in the cellars, let them sit, let them talk, let them write. And we have all these many Wikipedians, thousands who come to Wikimania, who just have a nice visual experience to edit Wikipedia. And of course, we have a lot of pictures from all over the world, from all the archives. We will have movies, we will have music, we won't have text. It will be hidden, it will be somewhere in a dark, deep cave of the internet, where a small number of Wikipedians likes to write, likes to chat with saying, oh, it's so great, all these newcomers, we finally got rid of them, just as true Wikipedians. We're sitting here, we're making valuable content, we're having fun, we have no faults anymore, we don't argue anymore. Actually, it's quite nice there. Yeah? Just, you know, it's somewhere between a hobby and somebody takes us up and makes nice apps and changes the world, but not us anymore, we're just having fun. Thank you. Barbara, can you come here? Um, what we've heard is a very, I don't know, perhaps a negative view of the future. Wikipedia is an entire entertainment system with apps, very personalized and not necessarily neutral. Uh, Barbara conducted a survey during the conference and asked people what do they think. And we want to show you this survey, if we get it going. 
And right after that, we want to open it to you, to have your view of the future, and maybe your view of how to avoid the future presented here. Um, okay, first the survey, please. Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank um, the persons that um, actually took um, part in the survey. It was not very easy to take part because apparently, um, um, well, the, we had some technical problems. Uh, first, the screen didn't work in the chapters village, and, and then it was not easy to get access to the Google Doc. But finally, um, we had, have some answers, and uh, I would like to go through with you um, um, the, most of the people do still believe that the uh, number of articles will con constantly increase. Um, well, like uh, a vast majority do think that. Also, a vast majority still thinks that the diversity among the editors will increase, meaning that people from the South uh, for, uh, women and other professionals and more scientists will finally um, contribute to the Wikipedia. But that's, that is already a less portion that believes in that. Um, still, a majority believes that the diversity of the topics in the Wikipedia will increase. That means that we will have more articles on topics um, like, for instance, fashion or um, sociology or, well, not only the um, Star Trek movies. Um, the importance of the Wikipedia as a starting point for research will grow. That believes still 82% um, uh, believe that. It's actually like right now, um, at least in, in Europe, you can see that um, Wikipedia is uh, steadily increasing in that amount. Um, about the share of paid editing, there has been some alternation uh, along the survey. Uh, right now, there are like 80% uh, roughly that believe that the share of paid editing, meaning that professional motivated people added to the Wikipedia will increase, which is related somehow to the next question that the intensity of frequency of conflicts of interest um, will increase as well. Uh, people do strongly believe in that. Um, despite they also believe that it be will become easier to participate in the Wikipedia. <laughs> Not everybody believes that it will become more stylish. But all of us, almost all of us, believe that the Wikipedia will still exist in 10 years. Um, well, we would like to um, ask you here in the audience, how about you? What, what is your opinion? We'd like to open this, uh, uh, the question. We have some mics over here and we With could yeah. okay. walk around and, uh, and you just lift your hand and wink to us and tell us your vision of the Wikipedia in the future. Thank okay. you. Introduce themselves too. That would be yeah, okay. it would be nice if you say just a word, who you are, where you come from and... Um, and we can also provide some guiding questions, like what do you think about gen gender diversity, age diversity, stuff like that. Uh, Amir, you were first. Um, yeah, uh, it's actually not a question. Um, uh, from the beginning of this, so, so I, like, I really liked everything that you said, but from the beginning, I felt very uncomfortable that there's nobody on the stage from um, India or China or Africa. So. Maybe there's somebody in the audience that is from other regions that, other than US and Europe that can maybe go on the stage? I'm, I'm from Argentina, Latin America. Okay, what about <laughs> Africa or, or India, maybe? Right. I would be really happy to see somebody. Just yeah, there's somebody in the audience. Yeah. Amir, just grab one and bring him. <laughs> or give him the mic. You can stand up and give him. Okay. Yeah. Listen, there's another person that just, <laughs> okay. come on. Okay. Maybe, maybe we should start with him. He's yeah, yeah, one, one at a time. Uh, okay. No, come, do come up. Oh. <laughs> okay. The other one was first. And, and you'll be next, yeah. And, okay, you're from, tell us what. Hello. Yeah. From? Okay, uh, it's very nice uh, to hear different perspectives on Wikimedia in 2022. Even I was thinking about what would happen 
uh, by 2022, and I just want to share <coughs> uh, one perspective. By the way, I am from India, and I co-founded the Wikimedia India chapter, and I am currently on the FDC. My name is Arjun Rao. So I, I really look at Wikimedia, Wikipedia in 2022 becoming one Wikipedia. Now we have uh, te.wikipedia for Telugu, Indian.wikipedia for English, and for all the other 268 languages. Because of the advances in uh, Google Translation, I think we will just have wikipedia.org uh, and it will, it will take our personalization, you know, our preference for language, and it will just collect all the information from the different language Wikipedias and present it at the level of detail that we are interested in. If it is just a summary or it is a very detailed, I think it will speak and also we will be able to edit it using, um, using voice rather than typing text. Thank you. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I have a question for you, actually. I'm supposed to ask questions to the panel, but I, I do have a question to you. My understanding that gender gap in India is very big. Only 8% of women in India would edit Wikipedia, uh, current in 2013. Uh, yes. In 13. How, what's, what do you think the ratio will be in 10 years? How many, if more women will edit, will it reach 50%? Will it be the same as the worldwide? Uh, I do feel that you know, the gender diversity will improve, the more and more women will uh, edit, but I think the uh, language contributions are not, I'm not really sure that it will uh, improve. I think it will be more and more focus will be on English, although I mean the language groups are trying to uh, really fight that, you know, the domination of in general uh, English uh, in, in within India. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have another from the audience. Just say your name and where from. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm a Wikipedia user, So Home, uh, from Hong Kong. Um, uh, for my view of the vision about the, the Wikipedia in 2022, I'm a fintech. Uh, by then, Wiki is not only a tool, but also a laughing style. Uh, for example, I have written down. Uh, for now, uh, when we go farming, uh, we have to uh, select the seeds or to select the field or to select the, uh, any other kind uh, resources. Uh, but, uh, it, but usually it is not selected by us. However, if you adopt the idea of wiki farm, so everyone interested to do farming can access the farm or to even to improve the, the plants uh, by yourself freely. Mm -hmm. Another example, uh, and nowadays when we go to a restaurant, we cannot to select or even to change the menu easily. But when we adopt the idea about the wiki cafe, so everyone can change the menu or to improve some ideas for the restaurants easily. And, uh, and the people can select the food with a free idea. That's okay. nice, I like that. <laughs> yeah. Another example, uh, for we, uh, when we do translation, uh, now the, the most popular translation engine is, uh, must be the Google Translate, isn't it? Uh, when we adopt the uh, idea of the wiki translate, everyone can improve the translation engine easily and to improve the translation uh, among the people worldwide. And then some useful one, uh, yeah. Or some example, uh, uh, in base of the time is limited, so I just uh, say, uh, say simply, wiki examination. <laughs> uh, we, can change the, we can change the professional, uh, professional examination paper easily with the guide of the professions. Or even the wiki government. If the president uh, <laughs> doing the achievement bad, uh, the cit uh, citizens can easily pull down the president and uh, select or to appoint the new one easily. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Or the, mo the most ultimate one, a uh, foreigners may be easy to get it. Wiki Freemasons. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. uh, I think we would not want to let more people try. Uh, do you have, do we have volunteers? No? Okay. Hope okay. that Wiki will be a lifestyle uh, 
in this 10 years uh, later or more faster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if, if there's no other volunteers for these ideas, we're going, I'm going to turn it back to the, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm Douglas, and I'm from uh, Wikimedia South Africa. Um, I suppose uh, a, a couple of things strike me of the possible future of, of Wikipedia. Uh, one is that as sort of the number of new articles starts uh, running out, topics start running out, we're probably going to see sort of the hyper-localization of Wikipedia, and I think a, really, a couple of folks have already mentioned that. So you'll see in the, in the first world people talking more about maybe sort of uh, local eateries, local places to go to, um, neighborhood uh, sites of interest. But I think in the developing world, you're probably going to see um, increasing number of articles, both explaining the, the quality of just general things, things you'd expect to see in first world countries, but also um, capturing details of life that are rapidly disappearing in countries that are rapidly industrializing. Um, and I think that's, that, that could be quite a powerful element for Wikipedia for storing indigenous knowledge moving forward in the future, as well as in the, the role that Wikicommons will play in sort of helping to capture that. Um, another sort of interesting trend, which I'd love to see how it evolves in the future, is that um, let's say, for example, I want to learn how to smelt steel in my backyard. Now, where do I go to find out that information? There are only two sources I know of. One is Wikipedia, and it turns out the article for smelting steel in Wikipedia is pretty rubbish because it gives you a great explanation if you are an industrial firm and you want to do it sort of chemically. But um, if, if you want to do it practically, then you've got to go to WikiHow. So what I'm... What would be interesting to see in the future is sort of um, in what way WikiHow and Wikipedia sort of begin to interact, maybe move closer. Maybe they'll, re they'll most probably remain just as far as they are, but they might move closer together in the future in terms of the nature of their content. They might not. Who knows? Um, so yeah, so those, those three things, I'd be very interested to see how they pan out in the future. Okay, um, somebody else? <laughs> Just Hi. say where you're ah, from and the name. Sorry, just, uh, Jens Best from Wikimedia Germany. I think uh, the Wikipedia will still be a website, but most of the use of the Wikipedia will not be this encyclopedia thing, which is totally in the background now, because we talk about free education and everything. So the whole thing is that the data and the, the knowledge and the, the words which are in Wikipedia can be used everywhere and are used everywhere else. Yeah, so. Um, the whole thing is not about, it's that, I like the wiki hub uh, word, uh, the, the speaker before me said, because um, if you want to learn how to melt iron or if you want to, if you want to learn this or that or if you want to make a, uh, uh, in a grammar school course or whatever, the Wikipedia is something which is, uh, can still be used but it's in the backyard and, and it's the source of many other things and I think that would be, I don't think that in 22 we will still have discussions about how to write the best article. I think the thing will be about the education aspect and not about the encyclopedia aspect, I think. To make a little bit of discourse here now. What, what we, oh, yeah. If you don't like the idea, you don't have to applaud. No, but <laughs> yeah, we, we should. <laughs> we like the idea, we should applaud. Uh, Actually, it's my idea, you just seem more optimistic. You just seem to enjoy it more than me. What, 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 we're, what we're doing here is not only trying to guess the future, but maybe try to set a path, because the trends are there, the personalizations is out there in the world, we see companies do it. Maybe we should think Wikipedia should do it as well, uh, not becoming not neutral, but do give a more personalized content, a more visual content. I've heard there were several lectures yesterday and today about more visual Wikipedia, so this is a path we are going, and that's a path that the cons consumers would want, would want us to go. So that's also something you can relate. Where would you like Wikipedia to go, taking in mind the trends that lead society? Um, Zico, you wanted to relate? Yes, I want to mention my good friend Nando Stöcklin from Switzerland. Uh, 13 years ago, in 2010, he published a book on Wikipedia in school. And there he wrote a very uh, sound uh, on... Uh, about the future Wikipedia in school, that teachers will say, 
to the pupils, don't go immediately to any text when you have to write a paper or do anything. Of course, you will first thoroughly Wikipedia, and only then you will read anything else. And this actually happened, but the problem with Wikipedia is that uh, it cannot be maintained by people because it's easy to create something and uh, after a couple of years no one is more interested to uh, update it. And Wikipedia, so, well you often see when you read Wikipedia, oh yes, it's like 10 years ago or 15 years ago that this article was created essentially and then one or two information has been added and that's all. So actually Wikipedia is dated like Brockhaus from 100 years ago. This is a real concern and even Wikidata wasn't capable of tackling that because there remained so many thresholds and was the, the most important threshold was a lack of interest. If something happened 10 years ago, then an article was created about this, uh, the ex-wife of um, uh, William Kate, Kate something. You know, this um, was interesting then and now, but now, nowadays only historians are interested in it. Uh, that will remain the problem, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, anybody? Um, Michael? Michael? Michael, right? Yeah. The lady over there. And if anybody else want to just Hi. raise their hand before so we know to give you the mic. So, in Hi, everyone. I'm from uh, mainland China, now working in Hong Kong. Uh, just wondering that whether uh, we keep thinking about like uh, uh, processing all the information and data uh, in the like database in the future, like providing a tool, a free tool, or uh, processing for the users uh, based on the information we've uh, gathered all these years. For example, if the user take a picture of a um, monument or some building, and through uh, Wiki Clouds, I name it. And you can get all those information about this building uh, based on the information uh, in Wiki, and or in the future, maybe you um, you just uh, like use, using the phone, you can put the phone uh, in front of the flower, and you ha just imagine uh, you have the smell of the flower, and through the Wiki clouds and you will notify what flower it is and uh, what's the information or background um, uh, knowledge of that. And that i just thinking that whether it's a good idea to processing all this information we've gathered from all these users and make it as a very good tool to help people and uh, very you know, um, uh, easy to use in the in the everyday business, <laughs> just like imagination. Thank you. Thank you. What, what you are saying, uh, wiki recognitions of flowers just by sense or by picture, <laughs> and perhaps Wikipedia storing smells and reproducing it. It's yes. Like yeah. And I say. Crowdsourcing, crowd information. Uh, Michael. That yeah. We have all this information now. And I think there are after a few years, and we have more and more about the world, and uh, and uh, uh, the, this information you know, uh, database, we can do more about it, right? And uh, uh, based on the technology develop, so that maybe happen. <laughs> nice, please, yes. What I'm struck by is. Hey, can you just say your name and where you're oh, from first? Sure, my name is Ray King. I'm from the US and a um, huge uh, wiki enthusiast. And um, what, what I find amazing is when, you know, when we build together using wiki collaborative technology, it puts us in a mind frame of coming to consensus versus um, what I see so often in uh, other environments where things devolve into debate, acrimony, voting against each other, um, and things like that. I'm, I'm imagining that, that Wikipedia, as unlikely as, uh, as it seemed 10 years ago, you know, now is a reality. 10 years from now, people will use it as an example in, uh, in the way they solve 
Could lots you of please others. move the mic towards your yeah. mouth? Sorry. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 So I said, uh, you know, as unlikely an idea as Wikipedia was 10 years ago, we now know it's a reality in terms of being able to um, uh, do something amazing together. So I think 10 years from now, as um, people realize how powerful the um, collaborative and consensus building um, uh, aspects are, that they will use that in many ways other than just uh, you know, what we're doing online today, but maybe as it applies to uh, government and solving problems together um, using the same consensus principles. Wikipolitics. Yeah. I think parties on wiki sites or wiki sites for political parties. Okay. Um, anybody else? Yes? Sebastian Weyroth, Wikimedia Deutschland. Um, so maybe as a reply to Zico, in 2022, we have introduced the right to forget into Wikipedia. <laughs> if an article is outdated, it will be deleted, and somebody else can come and have a blank page and can, can write this article nearly. For, for society experience, to enable them to rewrite the same article again and again, just for the enjoyment of writing. The enjoyment of writing is important. Yes, please. Hi, well, my, my name is Pepe Robles from Argentina. Well, I'd like to thank... Can you just stand up? Yeah. You, you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it, but if stand up so people will see. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to think uh, 10 years from now, we are going to do Wikimedia, perhaps in Beijing, perhaps in a stadium in the Nest Bird Stadium of Beijing. I like to think like in, in this way, 10 years from now, no? If not, Wikimedia is, Wikipedia is not going to conquer the world. I have, I have spoken to um, one of the participants here who came from India, and he told me that if Wikimania would take place in India, they could get 20,000 people to attend. But, and that's why they don't want to bid for Wikimania, because it's too bu they don't want to organize such a big conference. But uh, we, ha we had a session yesterday about what Wikimania would look like in the future. We didn't discuss the size of it. It would be interesting how to host a Wikipedia conference for 400,000 people. Um, did, oh, yes, please. Hi. Oh. Hi, my name's Isla. Um, I'm from Wiki Africa, from Cape Town. Um, and my idea is actually not my idea, it's um, from Peter at, at, in Namibia. He said yesterday that, and he was very serious about it, that um, with the problem with SOPA and all of the um, issues around press freedom and freedom to information, that actually in the future maybe Wikipedia would consider moving their servers to a place in the world that was guaranteed press free freedom and, and freedom from information. And one of those places is actually Namibia. So it might be a fact, and who knows? It's just something that might be considered. Okay. That's a good idea. Maybe we can all donate money and buy an island where we can set our own rules with <laughs> complete freedom of panorama, no copyrights, we put the servers there. You think it would work? Garfield. Gustav has told us how to earn the money for it. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on, on, yeah, on satellite, it could work. Buy a satellite and send the servers there. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. I'm not sure if anyone have touched on it, but I think uh, by 2020, is it 2022? Yeah. yeah. Who would have made a better use of the discussion pages? Has anyone touched on that one yet? Impossible. I know. Yeah, because uh, we all know that for every article, there are at least like seven discussion pages. And the moment there are like knowledge buried there, a lot of discussions and lots of debates. Uh, you basically got all kinds of uh, interaction between humans uh, already talking about this, those things over there. If we can reuse those things in a more you know, easier manner, it can save us a lot of uh, time when we don't have to act out that entire thing again in the, in the real world. In fact, I can even think it, could dis it would improve world peace, really. So I think by then, we really need to find a ba way to better make use of the discussion pages data. Okay. 
That's good, nobody talked about it. Who knows, it maybe in 10 years we will have discussions on uh, interactive videos. People will actually see each other when they're talking on the talk pages. Um, did somebody else vote? No? Okay, I want to return this to the panel, and I'm going to ask the panel a, a difficult question. Um, how would you, we are now not looking from the future back, but looking from here to the future. What kind of trend should be set to avoid the negative future you have described, to make a more better Wikipedia or better experience? Um, Marco, can we start with you? So, I mean, I, I don't think my future was negative. I mean, I think that uh, I mean I think that it may be negative for Wikipedia, but I think that the idea that we have found other and more effective ways to you know achieve our vision and goals is a positive thing. If not for Wikipedia, then but for our movement. So I think that like uh, uh, I think that that's important. Um, that said, I think that uh, I think that that. Like, we need to think r really hard about, uh, so p people talk about like a sort of stagnation of editing, editorship, right? But I think that completely underestimates the problem. Because of course, during this period, the, you know, that, you know, editorship has been roughly stagnant in most of the largest wikis, the readership has doubled. Um, the proportion of users who edit Wikipedia is become very small, and I think that we need to think about ways to engage large numbers of people that are, you know, there's a 5,000 to one reader to edit, editor ratio or something like that, depending on how you define um, editor, and I think that that's absolutely outrageous for an organization and for a movement whose goal is to empower people to transcend their roles as just consumers of information. So I think that we need to think about different types of, I think that we need to think about different <laughs> types of engagement, like really outside the box. I, need to th I think we need to think about different genres of information that people might want to produce, different types of things people might want to create, um, and different ways of doing that, so. Engaging people in creating much more visual information that will be brought up to the website. I'd say if engaging people in creating non-encyclopedic content um, uh, of various forms. Um, thinking, thinking about uh, what other types of projects we might engage people with that can feed into this bigger project. So. Creative Commons cooking? Sure, <laughs> sure. Like, yes, the answer to all of the questions is yes. Um, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Melissa, can you also try and see the future in a positive way and see how the community could be a better place not to avoid the problems that it has today? Just to avoid the, the problems? Well, you have a mic? Okay. Well, as I said before, I think that community <laughs> should be more focused on producing your content and realize why they came to Wikipedia in the first place. And maybe if they, as I said, if they engage in other activities, that might be for something good, because in Spanish Wikipedia, we're just discussing for the sake of discussing. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. So I think in the future, being very optimistic that this will be solved and everybody will remember why why they, they decided to click on a red red link and start a new article or correct a typo maybe and continue doing it because they enjoy it. So uh, that is that is my point of view. Well, what Marco was saying that the more important is not the product, it's the movement. We must keep the movement and its goals going forward, even if we have to dump the product and make a new one. What you are saying, actually, if I'm getting it right, it's what's most important is that we have fun doing it. Because the more we have fun doing it, the more people will come in and the more we will stay. Yes, and, and I will add, some of you may not know, I am not part of any board or anything. I'm just a regular user. I'm an administrator on Spanish Wikipedia, but uh, I'm here on this panel only for that because I'm part of the community. I like to write articles, and uh, sometimes it's, it's really hard to to make that the people who are in the chapter edit and make the people who edit to participate in chapter activities. That is like a, a really big, um, it's like a really big issue and well, I thought that that is something that we need to work on. Christophe, what's your idea of how to reach a better future? So, obviously I don't believe that we will become a company, but 
Well, I mean, I would love because no, share, share, the shares would be quite interesting to get some share on that because it would be pricey. Come on, six to six. To <laughs> Those are Wikimedia France plushies and we need to take them to our panels and show pictures, so here. <laughs> you love them, I know. Um, so, uh, let's get serious. Um, Wikipedia will not become a company. I mean, I cannot see that happen, even if it's seducing for the money. Um, but still, companies are going to be um, an issue we are avoiding right now, and we are not tackling. And so we don't, I don't believe the company that will perform by hard to us, but they have interaction with us. And right now, it's, uh, it's in the dark. And in the future, companies will, and third parties organization at large, will have much more interest and more and more interest in interacting with Wikipedia. So, I don't have the auto promo, uh, auto promo template. What's the name in English for that? Auto promo? Auto promo? Yes, uh, self advertising. Uh, oh, okay. okay. Well, come to my panel, well, to my talk tomorrow for one hour. I'm going to talk about companies and their place on Wikipedia because this is something we are avoiding uh, because people don't want to talk about that and we have to. Uh, more and more companies are doing stuff on Wikipedia in the dark and we just you know, we put our heads in the sand and say, no, it's not happening, but it is. So, yeah, I think in the future this is going to be a real, and I don't like the term issue because I see it in a positive way, but if this is something we have to address. What you are saying is that we are just Okay, hiding. so it's at 12 uh, N001. It's going to be an awesome talk for one hour, full, talking over me about paid editing and companies, please come. And I haven't done my slides yet, so yeah. it's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, that was a commercial for tomorrow's talk, but actually it's a very, <laughs> yeah, a very important question we are putting, what? Yeah. hiding our heads in the sand. Yeah, this was an ad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> an ad for tomorrow. Nicely sponsored by myself. <laughs> but we are hiding the heads in the sand. Companies are editing Wikipedia now, and people are being paid edit, and we just don't have the right set of rules to see it and maybe facilitate it, maybe continue with it. I now so want to go if to... I just can yeah. A, little, a little more because I really need people to come. I mean, I've been fighting for this talk to come. <laughs> so tomorrow I'm going to, uh, so just for teasing, uh, I'm going to explain to you what GAM is paid editing and why we have been pay doing paid editing for a long time. So if you're working in GAMs, I'm going to troll you. So please come and, you know, interact okay. with me. This talk, we can continue, please. Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, Dirk, you gave, uh, you talked about how the general public sees Wikipedia is something in the future will probably be done by bots, by automatic things. We already have bots today doing a lot of stuff. Automatic writing of articles, translations from Wikidata or stuff like that. Can you give a more positive uptake of a future? Uh, Actually, I thought my... Um, is this working? No, not really. It is. It is? Oh, okay. Actually, I thought my uptake was quite positive. I mean, for Wikipedians, Wikipedia is really nice and relaxed and everybody likes each other. I'm just a few people, but these are really nice to each other, so I don't think it's positive. Um, but on a more serious matter, I think I'm going with Benjamin that we're going to have a layered Wikipedia where you can delve deep, delve deep into it, and it's hard, and you write long articles, and we have many more layers where people just do a bit. And I think the problem and the thing we need to watch is that these layers um, keep in touch, and that you can see from the outer layers, the inner one, and that the inner one still cares about what the outer, outer layer is actually doing. And I think that's a big challenge, how you keep these layers in touch. First one, to have different layers of Wikipedia participation and different kinds of being Wikipedian and the other one to keep in touch with each other and not have a split somewhere in between so that you have a Wikipedia for authors and then a movement, wiki, whatever, in a big stadium. Okay, thank you. Baba, the most difficult task is for you to try and summarize this and give us a vision of 10 yeah, years right. from now. Um, I'll try to do that. I've been typing um, all your um, statements here and I found it very interesting that apparently there's kind of a consensus and maybe uh, shout at me, yell at me if, if I'm interpreting wrong. But I do have the impression that many of us in, in the audience would really go for, um, let's say, uh, different layers. We have had that word now several times, like, like uh, um, the woman there from, the lady there from Hong Kong, she said she would like to have this Wikipedia in the background that helps her to identify the items around her. Or uh, we had um, from South Africa um, the, the, the wish to 
to interfere better in between WikiHow and, and Wikipedia. This all shows that linking up in between the different worlds would really help us for, for the future. And it also shows that, that we need to open up, open up our community in order um, to come back to our roots where we all started off, like um, Michael referred, like this newpedia and the newpedia, um, they're like, they have similar similar things. This opening up would would actually be a possibility to create like new projects that we will still have the Wikipedia as an encyclopedia, uh, which is let's say one form to collect knowledge. But there is so much more knowledge around which can't fit into a into an encyclopedia, uh, which is a rather old-fashioned European kind of uh, um, way to, to define knowledge, but there's so more things we could do. And uh, if we find a way to interlace in between these different forms and make it easier for people outside, they're not only reading us, but, well, could just add their photo they just found or um, add maybe some voice or read a little story for us, add it into the whole Wikimedia movement, then I'm pretty optimistic about our future. It might not just deal about Wikipedia, but a whole Wikimedia movement as we all feel we are. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Meko, who went around with the mics. Yeah, thank you, guys. I want to thank our panel members. We had a lot of thinking about what things mm -hmm. would look like in the not so near future. And uh, Wikimedia Deutsche for the time machine. And I do hope we will see you 10 years from now again with the same panel. See who was right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just uh, we do have um, a little um, gig for you. Uh, we prepared, um, um, how do you say that? Like a vote? Oh, yeah. Um, yes. What about this? Uh, so. Um, Sorry. Uh, I need you to. Mike, we just want you to. Mike, I'll try to turn it off. What? I, sorry, I'm very not techy. Uh, we uh, have a vote between two slides. Just question yes, no. Two and visions of Wikipedia that we want you to see which one you like better. You all. Okay. I'll, I'll wait. The easiest thing is you just have to scream and. Um, and applaud or stamp with your feet for the option you like. We have an applausometer uh, that is measuring exactly and precisely um, which uh, vote is getting like most uh, most attraction. And uh, so, in the end, we could tell you like uh, where we are going to. We have two options. This is okay. Option one, Baba. Right. Um, this is uh, option A. Um, we we didn't want to put it numbers. You know, this always always implies that this is better than the other. So this is option A, or one, or star, or heart, or whatever. This is one of the options, and uh, it's uh, Wikipedia is. Uh, staying true to itself. Uh, we will always stay for quality. And what is happening outside there, this is another, um, another thing. Is that about that? Right. And then we have the option B. Um, <laughs> right. There we will have an easy access for everybody to contribute and uh, or to edit or simple sharing your opinion, which is like uh, we will have interaction with all different kinds of applications. And, um, and uh, well, that, that is about option B that has been mentioned here as well. So we would like you now, the ones that prefer to have the Wikipedia in its good ways at, as we know it, to give us the, your vote now. Are you ready for measuring? Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, thank it's you. I, I'll just ask 82. my assistant. It's 82 decibels. Oh, 82. Okay, keep that in mind, please. And now option B, a more... Option B. I want you to applaud now for option B. Please stand up. Go for it. Okay. All right, all right. So the peak it's, was? It's uh, Victor 91. 91. Woo, we made it! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, and hope you're going to enjoy the rest of the Wikimedia as well. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I, I need to ask.